So now let's talk about the sympathetic nervous system. Now whenever we're talking about the sympathetic nervous system, it's going to work very similar as the parasympathetic nervous system. It's going to also work through the disynaptic pathway. Okay, So we have the disynaptic pathway here. But this is not the only way. There is going to be four different ways the sympathetic nervous system, system works. And this is only the first example. So we have our preganglionic nerve, which has the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which is stimulating the nicotinic receptor with a small n because the nicotinic receptor is interacting with the nerve here, which is the postganglionic nerve. The postganglionic nerve is, is then stimulating our alpha and beta receptors. The receptors are alpha and beta, but the neurotransmitter here is going to be norepinephrine. Here, the neurotransmitter was acetylcholine, but here, the neurotransmitter is norepinephrine. Here, the receptor was muscarinic. Here, the receptors are alpha and beta. But things are same here. Neurotransmitter here is acetylcholine. Here is also acetylcholine. The receptor here is also nicotinic with an N. Here is also the neuro neurotransmitter nicotinic with an N. So this is our first example. The second one is, again, we have acetylcholine as neurotransmitter, just as this one and this one. The same situation as my parasympathetic and mesympathetic here. But the postganglionic, is going to have acetylcholine as its receptor, acetylcholine, sorry, as its neurotransmitter, and the receptor is going to be muscarinic. And when do we have situations like this? Why are we going to have a muscarinic receptor which falls under the sympathetic umbrella? And that's because this is only the paradox in sympathetic nervous system where the sweat glands, the pilorectal glands, a pilorectile muscles and some other smooth muscles, a very handful of muscle is going to be innervated by the muscarinic receptors where the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine, but it does fall under the sympathetic nervous system and not typically under the parasympathetic nervous system, which deals with the muscarinic receptors. So this one is an exception of the rule. The third way is when the preganglionic is again acetylcholine, the receptor is again nicotinic with a small n, but the postganglionic is going to be our dopamine receptors, D1 and D2. Now since we are not talking about the brain, in the, in the peripheral nervous system, the dopamine receptors is going to what? What effect will it, is it going to have? It's going to relax our vascular smooth muscles, right? Vascular renal muscles, renal smooth muscles. And the neurotransmitter is going to be dopamine. So dopamine here is a neurotransmitter. Receptors are D1 and D2. In this one, the acetylcholine was a neurotransmitter. The receptor was muscarinic. In this one, the neurotransmitter was norepinephrine, but the receptors were alpha and beta. So far, so good, right? Now, the fourth way. The fourth way is not the disynaptic pathway. The fourth way is the one which deals with adrenal medulla. And adrenal medulla is not going to secrete neurotransmitter it's going to secrete hormone, hormones like norepinephrine and epinephrine. And these hormones can travel to any alpha or beta receptors, whether they're innervated or they're not innervated. So for example, this one is innervated by a nerve, so that's why these are the innervated ones. Look at this one, these are not innervated. So it doesn't matter, it's not this epinephrine coming from the adrenal medulla which is a hormone and not a neurotransmitter, is not going to differentiate whether the alpha-beta receptors are innervated or not innervated. Regardless of innervation or non-innervation, this epinephrine is going to stimulate all the alpha and the beta receptors. Okay, And I just want to tell you that beta-2 is never innervated. Beta-2 always affects or is always active under the work of ep epinephrine. Epinephrine goes and stimulates the beta-2 receptor. And this kind of stimulation of alpha and beta receptors through the hormone and not through the neurotransmitter is called a neurohumoral innervation. Okay, just a term to throw it out there. So those are all my sympathetic pathways. That wasn't hard at all, right? That was easy. So now I'm going to step it up a little bit further. We have been talking about the autonomic nervous system. So let's quickly, very quickly, let's talk about the somatic nervous system. 
So in somatic nervous system, we only have one nerve. It's not disynaptic like this. So that's why I drew it on the other side. So the synaptic nervous system, the somatic nervous system is going to stimulate a muscle. So this is our muscle. And the receptor is going to be nicotinic. Okay? But these nicotinic receptors are named NM. And the M stands for muscle. Where here, these nicotinic receptors were N N, where the N stood for nerve. Now this is going to be how the somatic uh, pathway is going to be stimulated. Now let's push it even a little more further. Let's see what happens when we have organophosphate poisoning. When we have organophosphate poisoning, we have a synapse. Okay, so this is a synapse. This is my presynaptic complex. This is my, sorry about that. This is my presynaptic complex and this is my postsynaptic complex. And we have acetylcholine being released from the presynaptic complex. Now there is also an enzyme which is present in our synapse called the acetylcholine esterase. And acetylcholine esterase job is to break down acetylcholine. But when we have organophosphate poisoning, uh, organophosphate is going to irreversibly inhibit acetylcholine esterase. This is going to really increase the acetylcholine levels in our synapse. So if the acetylcholine levels in the synapse really, really increases to a high amount, how is it going to affect our overall system, the, uh, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic pathway? So in order to determine that, we have to go back to our original diagram. Okay, so let's see where acetylcholine is. Well, acetylcholine is everywhere. See, we have acetylcholine here in parasympathetic. We have acetylcholine here in sympathetic. And it's my mistake, I forgot to tell you that there is going to be acetylcholine here as well. So now see, the acetylcholine here is going to increase a lot. Right? Obviously, because acetylcholine at all levels. We're not really going to worry about the acetylcholine at this junction, we're only going to deal with the post-ganglionic innervation because that's where it really matters. So here also we're going to have increase in acetylcholine. Here we're going to have increase in acetylcholine too. So everywhere we have acetylcholine, we're going to have increased neurotransmission in those junctions. So what effect can we expect from here? So if we have increased acetylcholine in our muscarinic receptors, we are going to have bradycardia. We are going to have increased in, increase in glandular secretions, increase in GI motility. All this is going to happen because of muscular receptor. We are also going to have sweating because the sweat glands are going to be stimulated. We are also going to have muscle excitation because of acetylcholine is being is being increased here, right? So to make this easier to remember that which ones is going to be affected, that's where the mnemonic comes in, right? The dumbbells, D for diarrhea, U for urination, M for meiosis. Why meiosis? Because the ciliary muscles of the eye is going to be stimulated, which is going to cause constriction of the pupil. For B, so we have two Bs, so I'm going to write the mnemonic here, just if someone needs it. It's dumbbells. D-U-M, B, so there's two Bs, E, L, S, and S. Okay, so D for diarrhea. Why? Because we are going to have our GI motility being increased because of our muscarinic receptor. U for urination for the same reason, M for meiosis. Why? Because our ciliary muscles of the eye is going to be stimulated due to the muscarinic reception. B, we are going to have bradycardia. The other B is going to be bronchodilation. E is going to be for excitation of skeletal muscle, which is here. L is going to be lacrimation. Like I said, all glands are going to be stimulated. S is going to be for sweating, and that's here. That's right here, like I mentioned. And the other S is going to be for 
salivation. So there you go. That's my sympathetic and my parasympathetic pathway. Hope you liked it and please leave me a comment suggesting any, um, any, any feedback or anything that I should improve on or anything that you like that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you.